do you ever want to go under like a like a pseudonym and and uh, release something completely inaccessible? Or yeah, yeah, and then and then some somebody online can say, oh, like twenty years later, did you know that this was him? And then you know I'll be dead or something, so uh, <laughs> it won't matter. But happy ending. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Pop Dust Presents. I'm here with Kevin Garrett. How's it going? It's going pretty well, man. This is actually uh, the first the first Pop Dust Presents interview that I've done in 2020. So that's nice. exciting. Glad Sweet. to have you, man. Honored to be here. Thank you. And you're having a quite quite the year, quite the quite the month. In fact, within the past week, I believe you dropped your latest EP, mm -hmm. and that is Made Up Lost Time. Yeah. Tell me a bit about the, the title. First meaning of, of Made Up Lost Time is just trying to catch up on those types of moments that, that you sort of miss. But then um, as I was putting the, the uh, track list together and, and working on the songs, and then uh, once you get to the fifth one, which if that song can't come back, uh, um, the, the treating, treating all of those moments as uh, um, sort of like, uh, essential to your process or your journey or whatever uh, and uh, kind of like turn the meaning into if you flip the words like there's, there's really not uh, no, no such thing as, as lost time um, if you if your perspective is right that's cool double meaning yeah very Robert Frost of you we love for double meaning yeah <laughs> yeah but so it sounds like you um, I'm guessing you you wrote the lyrics yeah. Okay. And is that always the case with your music? Do you have a team that you write with, or? Yeah, I'm I'm pretty selective lyrically with who I, who I'd be willing to, um, kind of share uh, share that with, um, and I, I'm I work a lot with other writers um, in sessions for uh, like other artists, but um, when it comes to my stuff, I kind of zone out and um, know exactly what I want to say. Uh, yeah often than not so there's a there's a couple writers who, who I trust with my feelings uh, but it's hard to find those kind of collaborators it sounds like it must have been pretty rewarding or like therapeutic to start writing the album with this idea of like you know there's so many things and like uh, moments that I've that have passed by me and I, you know there's so much lost time to make up for and then by the end of writing it you're like actually there's no such thing as lost time yeah uh, <laughs> That's pretty cool. Do you feel like the listener will will catch on to that journey throughout? Like, did you do the track list like in a way that it presents it, or you're just kind of hoping that it, you know, comes across with the track list? Like, it's bookended by the arc, and then the middle is kind of up to the listener's interpretation. Um, so many different angles as to what I was trying to catch up on when I was making this. Like the the album I put out before. Called Hoax um, took forever to make and release. A full length album, that's a big deal. Yeah, so many different versions of the songs in, in like demo form and, and everything to finally get that out was like this huge weight off of my uh, entire body and, yeah. and, uh, and my mind. Last fall, I put the first song out off the EP called Factor In. And um, uh, yeah, I, th I think writing and, and making a project in a sort of smaller, time frame uh, is equal parts um, like uh, daunting and also uh, rewarding because um, I'm a perfectionist still. It's not like I'm, I'm caring any less about the work even though I'm trying to speed the process up. But at the same time, when I get to perform these songs, they are so fresh that it, it becomes, I think, um, as, as honest of a performance as I can give. Yeah, that's interesting. The longer time that you spend on the project, you know, you might grow and like out outgrow some of those songs by the time that they're actually released to the point that it might not have the same like visceral impact for you when, when you're performing it, you know, because there's been yeah. so much time in between. But as we established, there's no such thing right. as lost time. Right. So yeah. it's all for something. I think like the impulsive sort of uh, pain associated with the songs that, that, I'm, that, that I write the more space I have between them, uh, the the better I can you know um, compartmentalize uh, that sort of um, feeling, so I can get through the song. For folks out there that might not be familiar with your music, 
or maybe they're familiar with your past album or EP, how would you describe your, your current sound? When I first started putting music out, uh, I, I kept calling everything on SoundCloud Pod Soul um, because there's so many different influences going into my writing. A lot of jazz, a lot of um, like R&B, and uh, I was classically trained before that. So and yeah, you're a multi instrumentalist, correct? Yeah, and you're you're a producer, so you you, you can uh, uh, yeah you can really control yeah everything that goes into the project. I'm guessing. Yeah, I, I can at the very least. Or like if I'm working with another producer or other people in the room, I, I can. Um, Provide clarity, uh, articulate a bit it. better, yeah, um, than, than I than I have been able to in the past. Do you ever want to go under like a like a pseudonym and and uh, release something completely inaccessible? <laughs> you know, I, I can't recall the name of the artist off the top of my head, but there's and I don't think it was a side project for for that person. But um, I I want to do she, she did this and, and I really want to do this make a EP or an album under a different name and like pitch my voice yeah in a different tone so uh so it sounds like a totally different thing you know? be, be a little bit like liberating i guess yeah I, I would like to to hide a little bit behind behind some music that people might not immediately associate with my style yeah and then you're like it's not a part of like your f official discography so more. yeah yeah and then and then some somebody online can say oh like 20 years later did you know that this was him and then you know i'll be dead or something so uh, <laughs> It won't matter, but happy ending. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll be dead, and it won't have mattered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everybody. It's Good all, night. No, I'll be um, So the lead single, uh, "Gone Again." Tell us a bit about that. That song definitely kind of goes goes through that sort of experiment that I that I wanted to mess around with, with kind of uh, trying to redefine some things about myself and. Uh, it ties into every every aspect of it, from taking less time to make the music to how I act like personally and and uh, and, and everything like that. So it, it was uh, nice to get that one out. And what what does the title itself refer to? Gone again. Like, uh, here I go again. Uh, <laughs> well, that's a kind of a fun angle. The title for me um, goes off of the sort of byline of the song, which is like, "I won't go until you're gone again," um, which is kind of uh, how how I. Um, Typically operate uh, and like I, I I stick around once I stick around on things and and it's that's across the board and and I and you know confronting those types of, of moments is, is difficult. On your Tinder profile, do you have on there that you were uh, Grammy nominated for working with Beyonce? I uh, because I per I definitely would. Yeah, that would be front and center. I feel like that would be effective. I'm not on any dating apps, uh, but there was a time. Right out of, I think right when Tinder started, where I, I had um, a profile, and I, I didn't go on any dates, but the people I matched with, they always asked what I did, and then uh, I ended up saying I was a musician, and then it ended up becoming um, free promo. Uh, so they were yeah. like, "Can I hear something?" And I would just the the, the chat would always you end. Sure can. Every match would always end with like my SoundCloud link, and then they would never talk to me again. So <laughs> I don't think any of them liked it, but it's fine. Well, the thing is, you have to you have to pick the conversation up after that, and you have to drop some names. Yeah, you've worked with a with a bunch of people. And I mean, what is it like to work with Beyonce? Did you ever actually get to be like in a room with her, or was it mostly like behind the scenes? It was it was it was fairly behind the scenes. I, I got to meet her a few times uh, over the course of the process, and and kind of got updates. But um, I I remember kind of sending my work over and then um, hearing kind of uh, little updates here and there and then and then when I got to hear the, the her singing on it um, it was uh, it was amazing because she sang it like so understated and um, didn't kind of like go over over sing any bits did you give like scratch like vocals like here's my idea of how it would be and then like you hear like Beyonce actually do it, and you're like, oh. Yeah, I mean, she had she had my my demo and and uh, and kind of the way I was singing it, and um, uh, yeah, she 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 put her own spin on it, but but kept it very nuanced, and I was lucky to to be there the one time she ever performed it live wow. uh, at the at the VMAs a few years ago. Uh, so um, that was really that's special. Sick. Yeah. That's that's got to be like a, a wild uh, surreal experience. Yeah, I mean, the fact that 
I've, I've, the few times I've met her and she remembers my name uh, is, is cool enough. Um, but to be on that album is a, is a real honor because I think it did a lot for um, obviously the musical landscape and, and the culture and the, and the music industry, but, but also something that, that I think put uh, art um, ahead of uh, like hype uh, yeah. for a while. Um, and, and people started That's a great being a lot more it. thoughtful um, with, with their output. Um, yeah, yeah, it's such a big project of, a, of an album, too. Yeah. We've talked about all the things that have happened so far with your career, but I know you have a big tour coming up yeah. with uh, Lennon and Stella. Yeah, yeah, I will be uh, touring North America with Lennon um, in, starting in May, uh, and it'll go through uh, like middle of July, and uh, there's a whole bunch of shows, um, parts of parts of the country and parts of Canada that, that I haven't been to in a while, so I'm excited for that. And, and she's really great. She's one of my favorite voices in music right now. Um, and we've gotten to work together a little bit on, on some stuff, and hopefully while we're uh, out together, we'll, we'll be able to write a little bit more. But i um, very excited. Well, thank you, man, for hanging out with us. Appreciate and uh, it. Yeah, good luck on the tour. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.